Hey guys, welcome to the Get A Brew channel. Today we're talking about malt extracts. You basically get two different types of malt extract. Liquid malt extract, also known as LME, and dry malt extract. We call it spray malt. You can also see it on recipes as DME. So the liquid malt extract is quite a thick, heavy, treacly type of uh, liquid. It's not going to be very flowable, or very runny, but it is relatively easy to use. The dry malt extract is pretty much what it says. It's dry. The way they make dry malt extract is they take liquid malt extract and pretty much dehydrate it. So essentially they are the same product. So the texture that you're going to get out of your dry malt extract is pretty much like Horlicks. Very dry, quite a fine powder. In liquid malts and dry malts, you're going to get different types. You're going to get light malt extract. Um, you're going to get extra light. We've got dark, amber. Pretty much these are going to give you different flavors in your beer. So you can play around if you want to, if you prefer to use a liquid malt or a dry malt extract, but you are going to get some different flavors. It's the same stuff that you're going to make your water out of. It's just been concentrated into a powder or a liquid. It's designed to get beginners brewing easier. It's already halfway done. All you're needing to do is add water to get the full amount of water you need for your beer. However, pro brewers can use these to up the gravity, if you're needing to up the gravity of your beer and to retain some of that nice malty taste that you're gonna get out of your wort. So we, we can recommend that you keep a bit of malt extract on hand on your brew days. So if you are a bit low on your gravity readings, add a little bit to your wort to get that gravity reading and that sugars up. Dry malt have a longer shelf life. You can keep it pretty much for a few years ready to go at any given time. Liquid malt shelf life is not as long, however, there is less steps in getting it ready for a brew day. So let's have a quick look at the pros and cons of dry malt versus liquid malt. Dry malt, obviously dry format, you're able to store this for a lot longer. Um, it's obviously gonna take up a lot less room because it doesn't have that liquid content. Some people do get put off by using it because it can be rather sticky and clumpy. One of the great things about it is because it's a powder, it is easier to measure out the exact quantities you're needing for your beer. Moving on to liquid malt. The one great advantage of liquid malt is it is already hydrated. It makes it a lot easier to mix into your wort. However, it is a very thick liquid. You're gonna to have to warm this up a little bit, maybe in some hot water, just to get it to pour a little bit easier. Another great advantage, it is easy to store, easy to package. Also, you're gonna find a few more styles in the liquid format. Another tricky thing with liquid malt is the viscosity. When you're trying to measure out an exact amount to get into your wort compared to your dry malt. All right, we're just gonna show you quickly what the contents of liquid malt and spray malt are like. We've got a little bit of cold water in our vessels and we're just gonna pour some of the liquid malt into here, some of the dry malt into here, just to show you exactly what the kind of consistencies you're gonna be expecting. So we haven't measured anything out properly. This is just for more of a visual reference just for you to see what it's like. The reason why we're doing this and showing you, we often get asked questions, what's the difference between dry malt and liquid malt and we just want to give you the opportunity to make a decision if you would want to use dry malt or liquid malt. Some guys want to actually swap out dry malt for liquid malt or want to try out dry malt. So let's look at uh, liquid malt quickly. We put the liquid malt in some hot water just to soften up just so that it's easier to pour. Now let's crack it open, get it in the vessel. So we're going to leave it in hot water a little bit longer but you can kind of see that is what the inside of your bottle is going to look like thick goopy so we're going to sit put it back into the hot water just to get it to soften up a little bit more we'll move over to the dry malt dry malt is a extremely dry fine powder so the reason why we're using cold water especially for your dry malt extract is the steam coming up if you had hot water you'd have steam coming up and that's actually going to cause the dry malt to clump up and become really sticky so it's best to mix it in cold water first then add it to your hot liquids you can see here if we had this um, steam coming up the the dry malt would actually stick to the outside of the bag will stick around the bags so you can see here because of the, the vessel being a bit wet, it's starting to clump up on the sides, starting to stick up on the side. This is kind of what you're gonna be expecting. So I'm just gonna mix this up. So you can start, kind of see how the, how the malt extract is gonna clump up a bit 
as you're mixing it. It is a lot better to mix it up with a spoon. I'm just swishing it around. So when you're using this in your brew day, you might want to add a little bit of hot water just to heat up the water. The hot water will help break up the clumps a little bit more. So the goal is to try and get as much of this hydrated as possible. If there are a few clumps um, when, before pouring this into your wort, it will get, uh, it's not the end of the world, it will get broken up during the brewing process. So this is kind of what it's going to look like when you're finished. If you give it a sniff, it kind of t um, it's got the smell of Maltesers, you know, the, the little center of Maltesers. And that's that, that real maltiness coming through on that. Okay, let's have a look at the liquid malt extract. So it's been sitting in hot water for a while. I can feel it's slightly more flowable. It's quite a sticky syrup-like texture. Almost like a soft treacle or caramel. Just to give you a quick idea of what it looks like while you're pouring it. So we poured it in cold water just to show you how it separates in the cold water. So now we're gonna add a bit of warm water just to show you how it mixes together. So again, this is not how you would do it at home. <laughs> um, it will be a lot easier having this in a bucket, mixing it up with a spoon. But the principle pretty much remains the same. Um, it's just mixing the liquid malts with some warm water and that is going to make your wort. Okay, so we've mixed these two up. The liquid malt was a little bit easier to mix in with the water. Um, however, they're pretty much going to land up being the same thing. So we've mixed these two up. You can kind of see the relatively similar. A little bit different in color, but we weren't using any measuring devices to get these done. So what we really wanted to do is just to show what people are going to be dealing with when using a dry malt extract or a liquid malt extract. All right, so thanks for watching. We hope this has been helpful. Have you ever tried or tried swapping out a liquid malt for a dry malt or vice versa? Let us know how you got on. Let us know any questions. Pop it down in the comments or send us an email. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. Happy brewing.